Hey everybody, so I wanted to share some tweaks and mods I made to my Skyfire based on some ideas that Jack shared from the Skyfire group. So, this is what I did. Alright, here's the air side back of the machine of the Skyfire. This is the Skyfire SVM2. I can't say everybody's Skyfire is the same. I'm not even going to say everybody's Skyfire SVM2 is the same. I'm not even going to say everybody's Skyfire SVM2 with the same feature pack as mine is the same because Skyfire's a young company and, and iterating. That's a polite way to put it. Um, so the how mine came and how I believe a lot of them come by default is you go in through one of these two holes with a 5 16 OD hose. That's a big deal. Not a lot of people we, we weren't really clear about what that was, but it's a 5 16 OD. It comes in, goes into this L. And there's a manifold here of three, uh, three ports. Uh, one port runs the gun. The second port comes up to this manifold, and out of this manifold, you have this disconnected hose would be for the mister, and then you have the default position for the ATC uh, umbrella and the open or closed position in the ATC that is to say when it's out to actually do a tool change. Uh, and then the third one goes off to the power draw bar. The power draw bar has its own solenoids. Um, it's all 5 sixteenths plumbed by default. Um, in fact, this is all 5 sixteenths and it does have one converter from 5 sixteenths to, to one quarter um, that I reused. Obviously I got rid of that. And it is all NPT, the North American standard threading. Um, so if you're thinking about a Skyfire or you have a Skyfire or you have one on order and you're wondering what threads to use to re redo any of the, the hoses, it's all 5 sixteenths push to connect and it's all quarter NPT, um, the, the North American standard, I think, whatever it is. It's NPT, it's a tapered thread. It's different than the British tapered thread and it is all quarter inch tapered thread. Um, I mix and match parts. Um, so what I did is based off work that a guy from the forums named Jack started, he realized or, or almost had a crash or something. The air gun can consume a lot of air, it can consume enough air because the regulator isn't high flow enough to feed it, which is just an open hole and to feed other things. So the air pressure can drop fast enough that if you were to be running the air gun, during a tool change, the hood might not actuate properly. I imagine theoretically, um, if you happen to time it wrong with a power draw bar, you'd have the same problem. Um, because it, and it'll it'll error out and it will stop the program, but you could potentially ignore the error out or hit clear and run and it not reset fast enough. And so he, he either did crash or got very near a crash. I don't remember which. So I took his idea, which was to pull the fog and to pull the... Um, gun and get them pre-regulation um, and what the other thing I did is yeah, I pulled so I pulled the fog and pulled the gun moved them pre-regulation and then what I also did is I went ahead and moved uh, and put an, an oiler an air tool oiler into the mix so the actuated parts the things that actually move get a little bit of oil um, from air to air tool oil uh, to keep them clean and happy so here's the breakdown uh, we're just going to go from start to finish. Uh, if you decide you want to do this, I'll have a links to all the parts. Um, I have an Amazon affiliate account. I get like two cents if you decide to buy something. Um, I'm not asking you to use it. You don't have to use it. It's just it's almost easier for me to make links from that than it is to make links otherwise. So here's here's my breakdown of my air system. I'm actually going to start from the very beginning, show you what I did. Maybe it was overkill, but uh, here we go. All right, so we have a Husky... Uh, 175 uh, PSI, 30 gallon portable air compressor. It's a big sucker. I don't know how portable it is. It's like two horsepower. It's not giant. Um, it's um, 170 PSI gives me like 30% more volume, so it turns off less on, turns on less often. That goes into uh, air dryer, air filter, air filter, air dryer. One of the, you know, there's some order here. I don't remember which way it is. The, however the factory was. This is way oversized. This is a three quarter inch in and out. That's bigger than I needed. I didn't know what I didn't know, so I, I oversized everything. Um, I regulate it down to 125. It comes into, this is a rapid air three quarter inch hose system. Uh, I went ahead and ran shop air everywhere in my 
shit, that's a useless shit. I'm gonna red shop here everywhere in my shop. Um, I got a hose there. I'm actually gonna put a, a, a hose over there. <coughs> um, I got one more hose uh, kind of further over. So that's overkill. I only needed air for this, but I was like, if I'm putting air in, I'm, I'm gonna put air in. Screw it, hippie. So there, there we go. All right, so here's the actual air coming in. 5 16 OD. These are called push to connect. If you're looking on Amazon, push to connect. This is a 5 16 OD to quarter. The, it goes into there. Uh, quarter inch uh, NT, MPT. Uh, threaded. That's your standard air threading, tapered threading in North America. Um, all right, so that comes up to here. This is a T. Off of this T, I come over here. That's my air gun air. What I did is I tucked it, I ran it, there's a hole over here, and I tucked it, and that allows me to kind of just, it just tucked it out of the way. So that actually came with the machine. That's a, a, a 5 16 to quarter conversion. It would have been over here on the manifold when that manifold existed. And so that's a, that then becomes a factory air, that blue hose there, the, the smaller blue hose is factory. And that just tucks it out of the way because I just had a lot of things happening when I tried to run everything over here. All right, so then that's your T off of that. And then coming off of that T, you have a Y. There you can kind of see the Y. Um, one half of that Y is the mister. Uh, and the other half of that Y is the power draw bar and the ATC. So you come down into here. There's your power. There's your two hoses, power draw bar, mister. And the mister, I put an inline regulator in my mister. So if I wanted to run the whole shot, if I wanted to run the mister, no more than 70 PSI, I could do that. There's actually a little nozzle to control it at the mister itself, but this just gives me like machine level control. Like, do I ever need 100 PSI going to the mister? Probably not, so let's just not let that happen. I think I actually have it set at 100 right now. It's funny for me to say that, maybe 95. Now that comes down, converts to the, to the quarter. So now that's a quarter um, OD instead of 5 16 OD. Uh, and then comes down and around, and this is this is a 12 volt solenoid. I think this runs at 10 and a half or something. It's enough to actuate a 12 volt, 12 volt solenoid. So 12 volt solenoid gets actuated, um, and then that's the factory hose there. All right. So then the so the the um, manifold's replaced with a 5 16 to uh, quarter MPT M yeah MPT, and that again. So the the factory from from uh, Skyfire, the factory coming from Skyfire, they're using uh, a regular that is MPT threaded because those are quarter inch MPT. So it comes off of there, comes up, goes around, goes into my oiler, which is actually just double sticky on. I need to like actually thread or something. It's kind of cheesy. Um, but that's into there. And again, that's their part there. So again, so we know that because this is my part, that's their part. And so we know the threadings com are, are compatible. Um, and then we come off of here, this T goes to the factory power draw bar hose. This hose would actually have been longer, come down and around. I clipped it to make it, I didn't need that much length and no reason to have extra hose. So that's that hose. And so we're coming off of here, power draw bar. And then we come into this manifold. This first solenoid is now dead. That's been replaced by that solenoid down there. That would have run the fog. And then this is your uh, default and actuator, actuate and default. I don't remember which one's which. It doesn't really matter at this point. So the good thing is that the power drawer bar gets a little bit of lubricant all the time, and now the um, the the, uh, the ar actuating arm for the ATC gets a little bit of all the time. So that's what I did. Um, if you have a Skyfire, uh, you might want to consider doing something similar to this. The links are in the parts. It actually, I don't know, the whole. I mean, it took me probably two hours to think it out. And like three orders because I ordered the wrong things a couple of times because I was like, oh, it's all quarter. And, and I, nope, it's not quarter. It's bigger. And then I got all three eighths thinking it was three eighths. It's, no, it's not three eighths. It's actually all five, eight, five sixteenths. So if you're going through this process, hey, it's five sixteenths. So save yourself some money. Save yourself some time. Uh, links to all the parts uh, are going to be available. Uh, Skyfire, this was not expensive. Uh, I would suggest go ahead and, uh, you know, do the time to do this. I think this is a better way to route everything. Uh, unless somebody has an even better way, iterate, improve, right? I was, I'm still in Jack's ideas. Uh, still is maybe a strong word, but you get the idea. Anyways, uh, I hope this is helpful. If you have a Skyfire SVM2 and an ATC, I would suggest looking at this mod. If you, uh, if you have another machine and the ATC is run off of air, uh, might be worth considering this mod as well. Um, best of luck, everybody. Thanks for your time. Bye.